Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. Good, good. to see you. Good to see you. Turn this light down a little bit. There we go. Hi, Julie. Good morning. Hi, Ann. Hi, Julie. Hi. Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Doing great. Grateful to be here. Still got it, Ann. Oh, awesome. Yay. He's still in my I, tummy, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I think about it all the time. Every time I look down at it, I say a little prayer. So oh, I think that's, that's so sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Is Mark joining today or is he working? He's working. He had meetings starting at 7.30 on till 12. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Oh, no, no, no worries. It's okay. Please tell him I said hi. I will. Thank you. Okay, well, let's get started today. I uh, thank everybody so much for being here and uh, certainly appreciate your presence. And as always, I enjoy putting these classes together. And I find that it also uh, in many ways helps me. So thank you for being a part of that help. Uh, whether you realize it or not, uh, your support certainly means a lot to me as well. Um, for today's practice, we're still cruising through this book called Power Versus Force. And uh, um, I just find it to be a really incredible book written by Dr. David Hawkins. And uh, today's topic is focused on the topic of reason. And uh, I'm going to share part of this because even as I read through this, um, it's a bit of a word salad. And I find that through the observation of sharing some of this, um, it can get a little bit heady. And maybe that's the point of it. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the reason for it. Who knows? But, you know, in the context of reason, last week, uh, we focused on the topic of acceptance. And when we begin to accept things as they are, we begin to also slowly understand that there is a reason behind it. And what I've been sharing with my classes is that reason tends to work very linearly, meaning something may be taking place right now. We don't know quite sure why it's happening. And we may have an understanding of what it is. We may accept what it is because we're at that acceptance stage, but we don't see the reason behind it. And I find that reason tends to reveal itself in time as we gain more experience with this life. And uh, I've been using the example, um, when I was 18, my mother passed away of cancer. And when she transitioned as an 18 year old, you're left questioning. You know, unfortunately I had the kind of mother that talked about this stuff ahead of time. And so we did have a little loving conversation in regards to it, but still at 18 you're like why me why why is this you know for if there's supposed to be a quote unquote god out there why would god take my mother away from me and uh i lived with this for many years and there was many times um where i would just, just all of a sudden start breaking down crying and sobbing like a baby out of nowhere um and i found that uh one of the reasons why i uh in my past used alcohol to a certain extent was because I didn't, I had a very difficult time facing the emotions surrounding this. 
And of course, there is other things too: socialize, socialization, hanging out with friends. I don't want to put it all on that. But I also look at other behaviors that showed up in my life with fear of being in a relationship because um, of my fear of loss, because I lost my mother at a young age. Um, why would I want to be in a relationship if I knew that I was going to lose somebody? My understanding was was limited. And what I found through doing work um, in the field of mental health, as well as in sobriety health, is that over time, the reason has revealed itself to me. At this point in my life, I don't ever feel like my mother's left me. Her physical body may not be here, but her presence is always with me. Um, and being able to now teach that and share that and put that into words, especially in the context of, because I work with a lot of into life individuals, um, speaking to them and being with them in their presence and also with loved ones and family around them. Um, my understanding of my mother's death and uh, reason behind my mother's death um, has a lot more sense. And because there is an understanding and some reason behind that, there is so much more love in my heart for that. But it took me many years to realize this. And for everybody, their timelines for realizations, that was just an example in my life. And I apologize, I took some time on it. But um, I feel if we were to look back at our lives, something may have happened to us at a certain point in time, and we didn't quite understand what that was. But if we lean into it and observe how we are today because of that, however it may have been, there was most likely a, a, a level of reason behind it. Now, Dr. David Hawkins said, intelligence and rationality rise to the forefront when the emotionalism of the lower levels is transcended. Reason is capable of handling large, complex amounts of data, making rapid, correct decisions, understanding the intricacies of relationships, gradations, and fine distinctions as well as expert manipulation of symbols as abstract concepts, which becomes increasingly important. This is the level of science, medicine, and generally increased capability for conceptualization and comprehension. Knowledge and education are sought as capital. Understanding and information are the main tools of accomplishment, which is the hallmark of the 400 level. This is the level of Nobel Prize winners, great statesmen and Supreme Court justices, Einstein, Freud, and many of the other great thinkers of history also calibrate here. The authors of the great books of the Western world calibrate here. Now, he does say the shortcomings of this level are the failure to clearly distinguish the difference between symbols and what they represent and confusion between the objective and subjective worlds that limits the understanding of causality. At this level, it is easy to lose sight of the forest for the trees, to become infatuated with concepts and theories, ending up in intellectualism and missing the essential point. Intellectualizing can become an end in itself. Reason is limited in that it does not afford the capacity for the discernment of essence or of the critical point of a complex issue. And it generally disregards context. Reason does not of itself provide a guide to truth. It produces massive amounts of information and documentation, but lacks the capability to resolve discrepancies in data and conclusions. All philosophic arguments sound convincing on their own. Although reason is highly effective in a technical world where the methodologies of logic dominate, reason itself, paradoxically, is the major block to reaching higher levels of consciousness. Transcending this level is relatively uncommon by only 4.0% of the world's population. And what comes after reason? Love. Now, I find this really interesting because for most people, we have to have a reason to love somebody. I'll love you if you do this for me. I will, uh, you know, if you act this way, then I may love you. 
to truly love somebody for no reason at all, I think is one of the most beautiful gifts that I, that we can provide this world. And I feel what is a value is to look at what are the blocks? What sort of reasons do I make up for this individual to perhaps love me? And while I'll use teens, for example, you know, especially with kids and teens, um, when kids start dating and teens start dating, there's a lot of shyness there. The, the love is already there. For some reason, you just love somebody, but you don't know what it is. But you have to prove that love first. And so then we go through this whole theatrics of proving our love to someone rather than just simply being love. Now, if you watch and Anne's here, you know, when a baby's born, it's just nothing but pure love. Absolutely that you don't have to do anything. It's just this pure love of, of release for that. But over time, that little baby grows and is touched by the world in different ways. And they may start thinking to themselves that at some point I'm not lovable. I feel this is where as adults, we can be really great at reminding them that yes, indeed, 100% you are lovable and just reinforcing that message over and over and over again. Because we don't need a reason to love somebody. Our mind will make up a reason to love somebody. If you look this way, if you act this way, if you behave this way, then that means that you're a lovable person. Really, that's just conditional love or some form of conditioning. Is this all making sense, I hope? Or confusing at all or you know I hope it makes some sense but what I would maybe lean into is if we're at that point of reason in our lives and that's totally fine no judgment behind it but uh, just observe if reason ever gets in the way of love for instance you see someone who may not have a home walking down the street are we still holding love in our eyes? Or are we looking at this person and creating a story about this person or this being? If we see, and I work in clinics around a lot of drug addicts, uh, as well as mental health. If I see someone as a drug addict rather than someone of love, then I'm still seeing them at a place of their past. I'm not allowing there to be a pathway forward. But if I choose to see them through eyes of love rather than eyes of neglect or eyes of judgment, then something else begins to change and shift. And I don't know exactly how that works. I don't have answers to that, but I do know that being in my heart when speaking to people is very different than being in my mind when I speak to people and knowing the difference I find is helpful. So with that said, I hope that makes um, some clarity and sense. And if it caused confusion, then I'm sorry about that. But um, I'm always open. I always have my interpretations of this. I don't think my answers are necessarily the right answer, but they do feel good internally. So I'm working with that. But if you have any suggestions too, then please suggest. And I'm be more than happy to be open to leaning into that as well too. And with that said, um, let's get into our practice. So let's go over to our mats. And as we lay down on our mats today, uh, I'd like us to take our arms out wide. Take your legs, feet, mats distance apart. In fact, if you want to take them even a little wider, that's fine too. There's a reason behind all of this. <laughs> Draw the shoulder blades down the back. Open the chest. Feel your lower back release. Feel the legs release. And as you start to come into your practice, begin to let go of our day. And the reason behind that is so that way we can truly focus on the present moment. Activities will come and go. Thoughts are going to come and go. But let us do our best to be as clear as we can here now in the present moment. And see how that continues to carry on.
Begin to observe your breath. Observing the inhales and the exhales. Observing the depth of the breath, the pace of the breath, the balance in the breath. Feel the temperature of the air as it flows into your body. Feel it around the nostrils as it moves through the nose, to the back of the throat, and down the windpipes. But notice any subtle shift and change in that temperature as you exhale. And the air flows back out the nose again. Inhaling through the nose. and exhaling out the nose. Inhaling through our nose. Exhaling out the nose. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling out the nose. Inhaling through our nose. Exhaling out the nose. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling out the nose. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling out the nose. Continue to breathe like this for the next minute or so, slowly controlled. And I'll explain the reason behind this type of breath. And the reason why we do this type of breath is to help promote breathing in and out through the nose. Roughly 25% of the population breathes through their mouth. This can cause a whole host of problems. Most of you have been on the call with me before, so I've talked about it. But for those that may be new, Breathing through the nose elicits several different things. One, it is the most natural method for the body to breathe. Breathing through the nose is what helps to filter air particles from drawing down into lungs. Breathing through the nose helps to humidify the air a little bit more as well as heat the air just a little bit more. Breathing through the nose, there are membranes throughout the nasal cavity that release nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a nasal, or excuse me, is a vasodilator, which helps to open up the various capillaries, arteries, and veins inside of the body. Through the stimulation of airflow through the nose, that nitric oxide uptake is more receivable and given. Therefore, as that moves into the body and through the bloodstream, now we have more of opening and channels for fresh prana or air to move into the body, to nourish the body. 
because we nourish the body through the breath. Let's all take an inhale, fill the lungs all the way up. Exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> Inhaling through the nose without straining. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Don't be afraid to make some tone. Inhaling. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Inhaling through our nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Inhaling through our nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> In through the nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Continue to do this on your own, breathing in through the nose and sighing it out. Notice how it feels to do it without being cued. Now, the reason behind this is also has multiple reasons. One is to be able to let go. Sometimes there is a fear to make noise, especially in yogic type practices. Don't be afraid to make some noises. It's totally okay to make some noise. Now, I would recommend that if we're in a public space practicing that we try to focus more on ourselves, so we try to keep the noise down to a minimum, but if it happens, it happens. The second part of breathing in a sigh out is to learn how to connect to the tone of your voice. Many people do not like the way that they sound when they speak. They hear themselves and they're repulsed by it. And if we're being honest with ourselves, we can ask ourselves, is that true about us? Do we sometimes fear hearing ourselves speak? Are we embarrassed by hearing ourselves speak? Do we shy away from it? Well, by practicing through the tonality of sighing, we can start to find our more natural tone. Also, as a third part, by breathing and sighing, that vibration tends to also relax different areas of our body, specifically our chest and specifically our facial expressions. Wherever you're at, take another inhale when you get there. And on the exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> now, pausing for a moment. Continue to breathe on your own smoothly and deeply in and out through the nose. And then scan through your body from your head to your toe, observing where there may be some stress, where there may be some built up tension, built up tightness, soreness, imbalances of any kind. And the reason why we do this is because it lets us know where we are at in the here and now. My body is feeling this here and now. I choose to accept and acknowledge where my body is at here and now. I choose not to deny where my body is at here and now. By knowing where my body is at here and now with the different symptoms of tension, of openness, of, of stress, of pain, of not pain, and we understand where that's at, we can now use the practice to focus on these areas that we may need to be released. All right, moving into our next breath, we'll focus on breath retention. Now in the breath retention, we're gonna hold our breath at the top of the inhale. We're gonna hold our breath for approximately 15 to 20 seconds, nothing too much, 
But in that, we can start to be introspective. The reason behind holding the breath is so that way we can start to see what happens when our thoughts come up. How do we react to our thoughts? Let's begin. Please take a long, slow, full inhale, holding your breath at the top of the inhale. Pause in stillness and hold. Exhale, letting it go. Feel the sensations move throughout the body. Now inhale, fill the lungs all the way back up again. Exhale, letting it go. Breath retention. Please take another long, slow, full, big breath in without straining, holding your breath at the top of the inhale. Relax into your body. As you relax into your body, allow yourself to be here. Observe what comes up mentally. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. Now one more time. Please take a long, slow, full inhale, holding the breath at the top of the inhale. As you hold at the top, relax into your body. As you relax into your body, allow yourself to be here. Just observe the thoughts as they arise. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. Smooth breath in. And smooth breath out. Smooth breath in. And smooth breath out. Slowly take the arms down along your side. Now let's do some movements to help open up the body just a little bit more. Bring your legs together and relax the feet, relax the legs. Turning your palms face up on an inhale, gently roll your shoulders upwards to your ears. And exhale, roll the shoulders down the back away from the ears. Inhale, roll the shoulders forward and up. Exhale, roll your shoulders back and down. Inhale, roll shoulders forward and up. Exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. And inhale, roll the shoulders forward and up. Exhale, shoulders back and down. 
Continue on your own with the breath, and I'll explain the reason behind this. As we roll the shoulders out, we carry a lot of tension and stress throughout our shoulders. That tension and stress shows up the form of a contraction. As we place awareness on the shoulders and breathe into them, we can relax the shoulders just a little bit more as space is created through the process of stretching. When we stretch and begin to breathe, a greater opening starts to happen. Therefore, we're able to breathe a little bit more deeply. As such, more of that prana and flow can move into the areas within the shoulders. And the same will be throughout the rest of the body too, the stretches that we do. Very good. With your next inhale, let's slide both of our feet in. And then we're gonna hug our knees into our chest. As we hug our knees into our chest, just a gentle rock side to side. The reason for this is to help release the lower back. The lower back is a tension point for many people. And when that becomes a tension point, the breath becomes stifled. Movement through life is a little bit more difficult. Mobility is a little bit more difficult. Picking things up is a little bit more difficult. Right, and then coming towards center, let's lower our feet down towards the ground, arms down along the sides. Now stack the knees over your ankles, root down through the arms. On an inhale, gently lift your hips upwards. Exhale, slowly lower the hips down towards the ground. Inhale, let's lift our hips upwards. Exhale, lower the hips down. Inhale, lift the hips upwards. The reason for this is to prep the body. Exhale, lower the hips down. Two more. Inhale, lifting the hips up. Exhale, lower the hips down. Now this time, inhale, please lift your hips up. Interlace the hands underneath you. Work your shoulder blades underneath you and spread through the collarbones. That'll create a little more stretch through the front of the shoulders. Three breaths, inhale, lift your hips up. Exhaling. Try not to force your shake. Inhaling. Exhaling. And one more. Inhale, lifting. And on the exhale, we release our hands and gently lower our hips down towards the ground. Slide the legs forward, palms face up. Take a slow, deep breath in through the nose, building the lungs all the way up. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> you may have experienced an opening and a little deeper breath there for that. All right, let's bend both knees, slide the feet in, and then take your knees wide apart. Cactus the arms, palms face up. Now, as you cactus the arms, have about a 90 degree bend in the elbows and just allow the outer knees to move down towards the ground. If you need to support your back, support your back, please. And let's breathe together here, inhaling. Exhaling. If you feel the legs shaking at all, focus on that area and try to still it and relax, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhale. 
and continue to breathe on your own. That's funny, as I'm sharing and teaching this practice live, the realization is coming up for me that the reason why I'm doing all of this is because I love you and I care about you in my own little way and unique way. Please know that. Inhale. Exhale. And one more, inhaling. And exhale. Very good. Take the hands down to the outer thighs. Slowly use the hands to bring the knees together. And let's slide the legs forward again, turning the palms face up. Take a long, slow breath in. Fill your lungs all the way up to the top without straining. And exhale, letting it go. Slide your right foot in. Bring your right knee into your chest. Interlace the hands around the right shin. Then just gently rock your right knee side to side, back and forth, back and forth. And as you do this, stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. Breathe as smoothly and as deeply as you can. We'll breathe together in a moment. It's so easy to check out of the breath by focusing on different things. And the mind is very seductive. It likes to do this. It likes us uh, just to think about the fear. It likes us to think about, you know, um, things that are unresolved. It likes us to think about you know, uh, maybe some insecurities, likes to think about a lot of different things. And it can also think about good things too. But the fact of the matter is, it still pulls us away from the present moment. Because we can either be fully here now, or we could be thinking about something that happened or may take place. Come back towards center, flex the right foot, flex the left foot. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, just observe it more than anything. Inhale. Exhale. If it's causing us stress, then maybe we need to let go of it. Big breath in. Unwanted stress. Exhale. Because not all stress is bad stress. One more, inhale. Exhale. Gently release the right leg down. Lightly shake the right leg up. And let's bring our left knee into our chest. Opposite interlace of the hands around the left shin. And slowly start to rock your left knee side to side, breathing slowly, breathing deeply, focusing on the nostrils and the airflow as it moves in, focusing on the expansion of the lungs and the rising of the belly, focusing on the exhale and that exchange of breath. And what a joy it is to simply be here breathing, to have this moment, just as it is, uninterrupted. And then we come back towards center, hugging our left knee into our chest. Flex your right foot, flex your left foot, shoulder blades down the back, collarbones spread. Take a long, slow inhale, filling our lungs up. Exhale, letting it go. Deep breath in, we fill our lungs all the way up. Exhale, letting it go.
Deep breath in. And exhale, letting it go. Gently release the left leg down, shake the left leg out. Shake the right leg out. Slide your right foot in, slide your left foot in. All right, let's cross our left thigh over our right thigh, left thigh over the right. Take your arms out to the sides. On an inhale, scoop your hips to your left and let your knees fall over to your right side. Turn the head to your left. You're gonna stretch in your lower back. Smooth breath in. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in. Exhale, letting it go. Find your twist. Breathe down the spine. Smooth breath in. Exhaling. And smooth breath in. And exhale. Very good. Slowly come back towards center. Uncross the legs. Switch the crossing of the legs. Right thigh over the left. Please scoot your hips over to your right side. Inhale. And on the exhale, gently let the knees fall over to your left side. Head turns to the right. Right shoulder blade moves down towards the ground. We'll do five breaths together, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One more, inhaling. And exhale. With your next inhale, please bring your knees back towards center. Uncross the legs, take your arms down along the sides, take your legs long. Now from here, let's all take a long, slow, full inhale, relax into your body, fill the lungs all the way up. And on the exhale, releasing, letting it go. You may have noticed there too, on that inhale, I, don't, I know from my body I did a longer, deeper, fuller inhale that touched something that wasn't open. All right, from here, please slide your feet in and let's roll over to our right side. And we're gonna use our left hand to press ourselves up. As we press ourselves up, we'll come into a 
seated position with our legs out in front of us. And we're going to come into a seated forward fold on an inhale, reach the arms upwards towards the sky. And on the exhale, forward fold out and over your legs. Smooth breath in, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. Try not to force it, moving the heart forward, literally and figuratively, inhaling, lengthening our spines. Exhale, moving our hearts forward, moving our hearts forward in life, moving our hearts literally forward out and over our legs, leading with our hearts, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. Stay with the breath, inhale. Be with the sensations in your body, exhale. Breathing on your own. The reason behind this and the stretches we've done before is to teach us to be with our breath as we move through life. It's not just about being with our breath on our yoga mats. It's about taking that practice off of our mat so we are more conscientious of our breath. Our breath constantly is telling us stuff through our awareness of it. If we're anxious, if we're in our heads, if we're in our hearts, what's tensing up throughout our bodies, and if we just stop to pause and breathe more slowly, immediately a shift begins to take place. We regain some control of our faculties, whether it is physical faculty or mental faculty. Take a long, slow inhale. Exhale, fold. With your next inhale, let's lift our chest up. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> and just notice how energy is now moving through your body, perhaps a little bit more linearly, up and down. All right, let's come into a comfortable cross-seated position. If you'd like to sit on a bolster, please sit on a bolster. Placing the hands on the knees, palms face down, lift the chest up. On an inhale, lift your chin, lift the gaze upwards, roll the eyes up. Exhale, chin to the chest, round the spine, doming the back. Inhale, spinal extension. We lift our chest up. Exhale, spinal flexion. We round our spine, doming our backs. Inhale, spinal extension, lifting. Exhale, rounding, doming the back. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, rounding and doming. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, rounding and doming.
Inhale, lifting. Exhale, rounding and doming. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, rounding and doming. Inhale, lift, reach. Exhale, round and dome. And inhale, lift, reach. And exhale, round and dome. On an inhale, let's lengthen our spine, sweep the arms up, reach up. Exhale, draw the hands down to the heart center, all the way down towards the ground. Separating the hands, inhale, arms reaching up. Maybe take the gaze up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, draw the hands down to the heart center, follow the hands down. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, lift the chin. Exhale, draw the hands down to our heart center. Inhale, arms out and up, reaching up. Exhale, draw the hands down to our heart center. One more time, inhale, sweep the arms out and up, reaching up. Exhale, draw the hands down to the heart center. Smooth breath in. Exhale, we let it go. <sighs> Smooth breath in through our nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Let's switch the crossing of our legs, other shin on top. The hands on the knees, palms face down. Let's slowly start to circle our head out. Then just breathe on your own. You know, and in my clinics this week, I've been asking uh, my groups, what is your reason for being here? Now, as many of you know, I tend to talk in a lot of different metaphors. Um, always from a try, uh, mostly from a space of love, sometimes to get a point across, and sometimes that can be annoying. I understand that. I try to look at that myself. But I would say most of it comes from my understanding of love and where I'm at with it. But when we ask ourselves that question, what is my reason for being here? That can start to cause a level of movement in the mind. Questions like, the mind may question like, do you mean here at this practice? Do you mean here right now on this earth? What do you mean by my reason for being here? Please recognize that that sort of, we do this one to gain more clarity, but also sometimes the mind can do that as a bit of a defense mechanism too. Now, I'm not saying it's good or bad. All I'm saying is just observe what comes up as the mind tries to answer that. Now, I'll be more specific with it. What is your reason for being here right now in this moment? And observe what the mind has to say in that. Circle your head in the opposite direction. How does the mind answer that? Just observe it without judgment. Now that reason for whatever it is, it's there, maybe because we know that these practices are relaxing. Maybe we love the community uh, that we're working with, which is one of the reasons why I love doing this work. Maybe it's because we've seen through experiential practice that breath work and moving the body and controlled and conscious ways 
helps to open it up and make it feel a little bit more relaxed. And maybe, just maybe, the reason behind all of that is because every single one of us is in the practice of learning to lean into love and the different ways that love that shows up. And this is one way that we can give love to our bodies and give back to ourselves for all that we give out. Please bring the head back towards center. Take an inhale. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Smooth breath in, open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> now, as we come to the closure of our practice, let's do some ohms together. And I'd like us to do three ohms. The first ohm, I'd like to simply dedicate it to yourself for showing up for yourself in practice and doing this type of work. The second ohm, I'd like you to dedicate it to someone in your life that maybe you've had a little bit of a struggle with or a little bit of an argument with. We do this as a way to let go of ego because sometimes we don't want to do that. Sometimes we don't want to lean in. And I know this from personal experience, but I also know that holding on to resentment, guilt, and shame aren't very healthy for us and may cause dis-ease and are a source of dis-ease. The third ohm, I'd like us to just send it out there you know, to whomever in the world it needs to touch, it'll touch. You have no idea how powerful your vibration is. Inhale. Oh. Second one, inhale. Smooth breath in, smooth breath out, placing your hands over your hearts, just pausing for a moment, just feel the practice sinking in, observe how you feel, notice if you feel a little more relaxed, more open at ease. If the breath is moving in and out of the body a little more slowly, and if the mind is a little more quiet, a little more still. Slow breath in. And on the exhale, we gently bow our head down towards our hands and hearts, honoring ourselves today, our practices for showing up on our mats. We honor our friends, families, loved ones, supporters. And gratitude to all of our many blessings, gifts, abundance, and miracles that show up for each and every one of us. And in gratitude to the many teachers and guides who passed along these practices called mindfulness, pranayama, breath work, and yoga. Gently release the hands down, open the eyes, lifting your chins. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's practice and I um, think you can take yourself off mute. Um, I hope that made sense and everything. Uh, sometimes it's hard putting what's in my heart into words. And sometimes I know that we're all different. It can be misconstrued, but please know that the whole reason behind it is because I don't have other ways sometimes to show my love for you. So yeah. this is just one of those little ways that I try to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. How, how do your bodies feel? Much better. Great. <laughs> okay. We're going to probably start um, as we get higher up with this. Um, I'm going to start transitioning some of these classes into 
both breath work where we did today, but also some gentle movements um, to just prep our bodies. I think that felt good in my body today and I don't know how it felt for you, but um, I think I'm gonna start incorporating a little bit more of that as well, so. That's very nice, yeah. David, that's great. Yeah, cool. it was good. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. I pray you have a great day and I look forward to connecting to you uh, next week. I don't, know, I don't know how Anne is doing bending over that tummy at this